the 2020 decade could go down as the golden era for America's top soccer league. For years, the sport has been labeled as soft amongst Americans, while people outside of the U.S. viewed it as a retirement league for former FIFA stars. The tide has turned within the last decade, as viewership has gone up and star players being recruited by clubs from the English Premier League more often than before. The English Premier League is basically Europe's version of the NFL. The best soccer players from the entire globe plays in that league. For MLS players to be recruited to that league on a consistent basis is a true testament to the growth and the bold steps that leadership is taking to improve the league. Another sign of growth is the first ever Thanksgiving game that took place in Commerce City, Colorado between the Rapids and the Portland Timbers. This wasn't merely a regular game. This was a thrilling playoff matchup where we witnessed the Timbers score a goal within the final minutes of extra time to knock the top seed Rapids out of the 2021 playoffs. This game was more interesting than the typical NFL game where we're forced to watch a pitiful Lions and an inconsistent Cowboys team. That playoff game had a record breaking of 1.8 million viewership on Fox. There are many more examples of how the league is growing such as expansion teams and soccer based stadiums being built. However, one thing that will put MLS in line as a major competitor to the NFL, NBA, and Major League Baseball is a cable network to call home. Yes, there are many people who are cutting the cord and streaming has played a major role in the growth of the league. However, cable networks give leagues the opportunity to expand its brand to those who aren't mobile savvy. It also gives the league the chance to reach a larger audience. Since most games are played on Saturdays, MLS would automatically be in competition with college football, which is an unofficial league that operates as a real one. This may sound like a daunting competitor, but if you closely examine that sport, you will come to realize that it's really not for these three reasons. One, college football is a regional sport like NASCAR. The major difference between the two sports is the racial demographic amongst the players. When it comes to the typical fan interests within American citizens, most people in New York City do not care about the Alabama Crimson Tide. And even though Southern California and Oregon are the supreme teams out west, most citizens west of I-35 don't rush to the TV screen to watch those teams play on Saturdays. College football out west is like the last item on a to-do list and you only do it if you have nothing to do. The Midwest is kind of similar to the South in regards to college football. However, people in this region are typically more passionate about the professional major city sports team. The second reason MLS can compete against college football is diversity. In the MLS, every continent on the globe is represented, which is similar to the millennial American demographic. Long gone are the days where America was just black, white, and Hispanic. The citizenship in this country now consists of every country and continent throughout the globe. Such similarity is seen amongst the MLS players, which brings communities together that typically don't come together on a Saturday afternoon. College football can't compete with the MLS on a diversity standpoint. It's not even close. The third reason Major League Soccer can compete with college football on Saturdays is that the college game is not a real league. There is no central government which means universities, athletic directors, coaches, and players can randomly make decisions on their own, which causes that system to remain dysfunctional. Now, when it comes to the exact network deal and who MLS should sign with, you have ESPN, which generally broadcasts MLS games through ESPN+, Plus, which is a streaming service. That network is getting ready to broadcast all of college football's Southeastern Conference games starting in 2024, which should eliminate them as a candidate to be the home of Major League Soccer, whose games are mostly played on Saturdays alongside the SEC. Next is Fox, the network that broadcasted the first ever Thanksgiving game. Similar to ESPN, they too broadcast college football games, but not the SEC. They usually show Big Ten. Pac-12 and Big 12 games with their big noon Saturday program and then go on to show Major League Baseball games in the late afternoon. College football and MLB are the competitors on Saturdays, so it may not be wise for MLS 
to share a broadcast network with them. If you're the MLS, you should want a cable network that you can have to yourself. A cable network that will allow you to broadcast games from 12 noon in the New York, Chicago, Atlanta markets to the late evening in the Los Angeles, Vegas, and Denver markets, which leaves us to two, CBS and NBC. CBS will no longer broadcast SEC games in 2024 due to that conference landing a $3 billion deal with Disney. It's believed that CBS is looking for another college conference to replace the SEC with. They may want to pump the brakes on such move because no conference will fill the void that the SEC is leaving behind. College football is a regional sport that works well for southern based programs. Major League Soccer has a bigger upside than college football on the national stage. NBC, on the other hand, rarely broadcasts sports as much as the other major networks. They showcase Notre Dame football on Saturdays, and on Sunday they broadcast one NFL game, which is in the nighttime. Similar to the SEC, the Fighting Irish is a regional program. If you don't have any connections to it, and if you don't live in the Chicago area, you generally don't care about Notre Dame football. Major League Soccer can share NBC Sports with Notre Dame football on Saturdays. NBC can also broadcast MLS Sunday afternoon games that leads up to the NFL Sunday night football game. This could put NBC Sports in financial competition with Fox and CBS, who generally shows NFL games on Sunday afternoon. The difference is, NBC will now show football games in the afternoon and the nighttime, giving sports fans a full sports slate without having to change the channel. You wake up watching NBC football and you fall asleep watching NBC football. Whichever route Major League Soccer choose to go, it has to be the right choice. They have to get it right. The golden era of Major League Soccer heavily lies on which network deal they establish. There is no margin for error in this category.